Welcome to the Wealth Without Wall Street podcast, your guide to understanding how to get out of the Wall Street rat race and start your own mailbox money lifestyle. Now, don't let these handsome Southern draws fool you. These financial minds are teaching our country to enhance savings, increase cash flow, and create passive income, all without the help of Wall Street. Are you ready to break through? Now, here are your hosts, Russ Morgan and Joey Murray. Welcome. This is the Wealth Without Wall Street podcast. Your host, Joey, the Italian stallion Murray, joined as always by Russ, the idea guy Morgan. Russ, today is an especially special day. We get to share the life of Nelson Nash. It is, it's a bittersweet day. It's one of those that, you know, I knew we were going to have at some point. It happened a little bit quicker than we were wanting. Yeah. But Nelson went to be with the Lord last week. He was 88 years old. And it just, I'm excited that there's some stories that maybe you've never heard about Nelson that we would love to share with you today. And also, there's some definitely lessons we always can uh, learn from him. Yeah, I mean, who who isn't thinking, what? How would I be remembered? Like, mm. what what is the legacy that I'm creating? Are aren't we all in the process of creating a legacy, whether we think we are or not? But it, it, what's the old thing? You know, uh, we're we're living that life, and someone's watching it for better for worse, right? Yeah, I have a five of those <laughs> that are watching it all the time, and they remind me uh, on a daily basis. But there's more people watching. And, and we were face-to-face -face with that last week, sitting in the funeral there with Nelson, and people from all over North America gathered to eulogize and to bring honor to a man's life that uh, is so special. Well, and I, I, you know, if you're listening to this and haven't met Nelson, maybe you don't know what his life was about. And that's one of the reasons why we want to do this podcast today, kind of like skip some other things that we had planned. Because to me, there's nothing uh, more important that we can share is some of the lessons that you and I have taken away from our 10 years spent with him. But it was, that was just 10 years of 88. <laughs> I mean, it was crazy <laughs> to listen to the stories of his life and to hear things that we didn't know but also, as I reflected back, how how am I building a legacy? You right. know, what will I be remembered for? And I just think today will be awesome to be able to just go through some of these things that not only stories that you and I had with Nelson, but also those that we heard, and think about are, are we working in 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 light of building a legacy that will be passed on? Because I I think that there's um, there's a lot of lessons to be learned from him and that. Yeah, I think the first thing, the, the fear of mine is that, that if you didn't know Nelson, you knew, but you knew, okay, he created this whole infinite banking concept, that he must have been about the pursuit of wealth. Mm, yeah. He must have been this, um, you may even picture him as like a, a greedy, like a miser, like he's, he's just always just so strategic with money, like that's all what his life was about. And I can't think, I mean... As weird as that sounds, I can't think of anything opposite of Nelson Nash. <laughs> yeah, that that would be definitely the opposite. I mean, <laughs> you and I knew him and just just sitting down and having a hamburger and him being like as excited as he's ever been <laughs> having that hamburger with us. Yeah. And, and and driving the same car. I mean, he drove this old Ford Explorer <laughs> forever. Uh, and this uh, this is silly, but just little things I pick up on along the way. He would wear the same belt <laughs> every time. Every time we were together, the same belt, it was worn out. He didn't have to have the flashy things. He wasn't materialistic. He wasn't. I remember when he first started doing um, con the, this, his 10-hour seminars. We, we would um, have him come, and, and we would bring clients to hear him and people who were not clients at the time. And do you remember the computer that he had? <laughs> It was like the size of like a, like a, a miniature notebook. I yeah. Mean, it's the smallest thing I've ever seen. And not in a good way. Like some people are like, oh, well, like he was very sophisticated in his technology. Like he did, no. like, you know, cause some people carry around like a boat anchor as a, as a laptop. <laughs> but no, this thing is like, the like, I, I don't, I, I'm sure he got it for like $2.99 or something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So On cheap. sale at Walmart or something like that. Yeah. He was not into flashiness. 
or anything along the lines. One thing I didn't know before the funeral was how he invested in his grandkids in experiences with them. They, they mentioned that he went to Europe on two or three separate different occasions for two to three weeks at a time with his grandkids. That was pretty cool. I mean, when you were there, I mean, the, the audience was large. But a third of it was just his family, yeah. which is so cool. I mean, he, even the pastor who was, you know, sharing stories about him was talking about how excited he was of this tenth great grandchild that was on his way. That's right. And, and the his life was about investing in those relationships. Relationships, absolutely. I mean, how many times did we hear? People say, yeah, Nelson reached out to me mm. in the last several weeks. Yeah. It's like he knew it was, he was, his life was kind of coming to an end, and he made that preparation. He made that time to reach out to people all over the world. But it's crazy. So if you don't know, so Nelson was dealing with some heart issues, and in his book he shared some of the things he had dealt with, and 30 years later some of those issues had uh, re-arisen, and is that a word? Re-arisen? I don't. I'm not sure that's a word, but yeah. but we're gonna go. With I make it up anyway. words as we go. But <laughs> but he he was in the hospital and he was calling people and I I Joey I was meeting people for the first time, which is kind of crazy that I would think that people who are in our industry that surely I would have met them at one of the think tanks or other you know deals that we do get togethers over the last 10 years and I was meeting people for the first time and they were telling me about how Nelson called him last week and was, you know, just talking to him about different things. And it's like that, that's someone who is others focused. Yeah. Who, no who really is interested in them and their success and just loves people. Well, and think about it. If you had created something like the infinite banking concept, you, the, the discoverer, if you will, wouldn't you have like this a little bit of a pride ego situation going on right now? The fact that Auburn is in the final four and I've had nothing to do with it, but I went to Auburn. Like I'm walking around with this just aura. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So can you imagine me having discovered something as cool as infinite banking? <laughs> oh my gosh. I, I would not want to be in the room with you, but, but that's not, that was not his life. That's not who he was. Yeah. And, and just to add a little bit more picture to that, Two or three weeks ago, Nelson fell on his 88th birthday and went to the hospital. And I, I just, something told me I need to go and see him. And I brought my 13-year-old daughter, Annie, to meet him for the first time. That was the only time she'd ever met him. And immediately, he, he asked her to come sit by his bed. And he just goes to town. I mean, talking to her, interested in her asking her questions, telling her story after story. Finally, I said, Nelson, you got to get some rest, brother. What are you doing? She's got to, she, we got to go. <laughs> and he had, he had an ongoing, just revolving door of people coming in and out of there. Um, but, but that was such a special thing to watch. And he said that was his absolute highlight was meeting Annie and getting to see her and, and talk to her. He is just someone that was always so generous with his time. Absolutely. And, and that, like I reflect in it, and I was sitting in the, in the pew listening to these stories and just thinking like, that's not who I am right now. I'm not super generous with my time. I, I'm focused on this phase of life in which we're in, of building a business and trying to grow it and, and to try to reach more people and I think of how many people I'm missing that are right around me that I'm not investing in. Isn't that like the a big uh, thing standing in all of our way, though, is busyness. Mm. Busyness, and I think part of that is selfishness. Yeah. You know, I, not wanting to get outside of myself to, to take in, in consideration who's this person in front of me right now. I mean, we've talked about it even with our, uh, our interview with Justin Harris that's going to be coming out, being present. That's yeah. such a, a value that Nelson did amazingly well. Well, it, it, one of the, the, the things that I remember from the funeral was the pastor talking about Nelson's 
want and desire to get to a place of peace and quiet so that he could think about things that then would plan of how he would live his life. You know, he, he talked about hours and hours of flying airplanes. Whenever yeah. he, you know, one when he was in the National Guard and secondly when he was just doing it personally. But then how he would walk around in the forest as a forester. Yeah. And that time, that peace, that solitude that he was together. And what he was doing in those moments was thinking and planning and creating in his mind the things that he wanted to do throughout his life. Yeah, if you if you hear us say it's all about how you think, it's because it's been ingrained in our brains from Nelson Nash. Yeah. That if there was one line that I could sum up Nelson Nash, he it would be it's all about how you think. So here's a, something that was really interesting to me. You and I have known him for the last 10 years. We've known Nelson Nash, the man of infinite banking. Right. We, we've had many meals with him. We've, we've been in different uh, trips and different locations with him. But we know him in that realm. But there were some pretty funny things that we learned about Nelson <laughs> not that had nothing to do with those things. Yeah. The, the, okay, a couple stories. One... He hand built his fireplace at his house, the homestead, if you will, now where David and Kim live, with rocks that he would find on the side of the road. Stones. Stones, yeah. Big, he, huge stones. Big yeah. ones. He would throw them in the back of the Volkswagen <laughs> and bring them home. And if they were too big, he would go on Saturdays with the kids and say, Kids, you're coming with me. We got to go pick up some rocks. Very meticulous in that, yeah. right? And the fact that he had these very specific stones in his mind that he wanted to be able to build. Just imagine this huge hearth fireplace that goes all the way up to the ceiling that he himself built with his family, with his kids. I mean, this this fireplace exists till today, and it's probably, I don't know, 50 years old? Yeah, something I mean, like that. It, just something like that. I mean, that's... Again, when you talk about leaving a legacy, a memory that will last forever, he he had that in mind. It was something that he wanted to do, but he wanted to do it with others. And that yeah. that was one of the things I took away is how patient he was with his children to teach them, whether it was flying. I mean, they would talk about the, you know, him teaching them, you know, this is fog. You know, fog is whenever, you know, the temperature is four degrees above the, science the dew fighting. point yeah. or whatever. And just all the science. And he was teaching them about the uh, the little compasses and the different instruments on the on the plane. And he was always teaching and teaching them how to do it. And sometimes, I know you know this about me, I kind of <laughs> have this got to go fast mentality. Yeah. Right? If you're ever riding with me, you're, you probably close your eyes because you're like, what are you doing? <laughs> and then I will say that was something I learned, sidebar, that uh, Nelson and I had in common, that he loved to drive fast. Yeah, the, the, I think the words were, he loved the Audubon. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> but he had patience, which was something that I, I don't think I, I possess a lot of. And, and, and that just the stories of his children talking about how he would teach them different things throughout their lives and how instrumental that has been in what they've done. Because he has some very successful children. They've gone on to, to reach some great heights. One of them was, you know, a uh, physician in the White House. The other one has created an, a, a, this business that has now taken over, you know, infinite banking. The other right. one has been a, a professor down in, uh, in Auburn. It's just amazing their lives and, and what they've done in their children's lives. But I think it comes back from a lesson of learning from their father. Yeah, no question at all. A, a story that I feel like was was just it just is going to stick in my mind forever was one time. I don't know if you remember this, Russ, but we were at lunch with Nelson, and this guy was so hilarious. He did things that you would never expect. We're sitting there, and all of a sudden, in the middle of lunch, he starts unbuttoning his shirt. I know where you're going here. Okay, all right. So you're you're with me. This is also burned into your your mind as well. Yeah. So he's teaching us about his experience with life insurance. Yeah, his experience with life insurance was his policy as old as it was. Was it almost sixty years old? Yeah, it was bought in the fifties. Yeah. Okay. So at this time, it's a, it, within the last few years, and he starts unbuttoning his shirt, 
not with no no explanation on the front end. <laughs> and I'm thinking, this is awkward. Like, what happened? What's going on? And he pulls out his check, his dividend check from his policy just to show us what what his most recent statement looked like from his policy. And I will never forget that, again, the awkwardness of it, but then the uh, amazement that he would have thought to do that for us. Well, so show gi- us. He was so giddy. He wanted to show <laughs> us the performance of the, this insurance policy that he'd had for almost 60 years because he'd been teaching us. We read about it, but we actually had – he just got it in the mail on the way to eat lunch with us. And he was like, I'm not going to forget this, right? Because if it's me, I sit it down on the chair, I forget it. Yeah. Well, Nelson, you know, he, he he's like, I don't, you know, I guess he didn't want to fold it over in like 30 different pieces to put it in his pocket. So <laughs> what did he do? He shoved it inside his button up shirt. I mean, and he pulls that. And it was just so funny. He, he was always about teaching yeah. and, and sharing experiences with you. The other thing I want to remember, I will always remember Nelson with is how he prepared for things. Mm. I, I, I will say this. I struggle with thinking past like the next 10 minutes. Yes. Um, but Nelson never had that trouble. He was always preparing for things, whether it was his own Bible study, whether it was his, his um, seminars. He had to memorize 10 hours of a seminar. <laughs> I 10 think, hours. I think about you when you and I get up and we do a 30 to 45 minute talk sometimes. Oh my gosh. That's work for me. Man. I mean, and I don't memorize it because I can't say the same thing twice. <laughs> <laughs> you love to have it memorized, but he would say the same thing because we heard his seminar, I don't know how many times. All right. 10 I, to 15. Easy. I, I don't know if you can pull this off for us, but I think the the number one joke in his seminar, mm. I want to see if you can pull off. You think I can try to pull that off? Yeah, I, I think you need to do that. All right, so here, here if you never got to hear Nelson in a, in a seminar live, I, this is not going to sound anything like him. <laughs> <laughs> but what I would say is so, so funny about his seminars, or cool, or however you want to look at it, is that not only had he memorized 10 hours worth of content, content that would go really deep. Yeah. For some people, their mind can't really go that deep. But he'd have an ability, a keen ability to keep everybody engaged, not only by being able to, to learn their names and being able to talk to them throughout the meeting, to share this very deep content, but keep it light too. In his own way, he, <laughs> in his 80s, could share jokes that no one else really can. Yeah, and I'm exactly. going to attempt it. So it's going to come off really bad, <laughs> just so you know. But I just remember like one of his just just most famous jokes that he would share. And it was on the fact he, he talked about in his book. His book was on a couple of different subject matters, right? His That's book right. was about imagination. Yep. It was about prophecy. It was about logic. Logic. And one of the things that he would say is he would um, kind of go through that process. He would say, you know, there was these two guys walking down the road, and one of them says to the other, I'm on my way to take this course down at Auburn. He'd use my, my Auburn Tigers, by the yeah. way, sometimes in not, so, not such a great light. But he would say, you know, they were, he says, I'm on my way to take this new course at Auburn's uh, given on logic. Another one says, well, logic? What's, What's that, that course about? about? He said, well, just a little bit of information. I can derive lots of different things about you by using logic. The guy says, like, how? He, well, let me ask you, do you own a weed eater? Well, yeah. Well, must logic would tell me that you must be a homeowner. Well, sure. Yeah. He said, well, logic would tell me you're probably married. Well, I am. Well, logic would tell me you probably have some kids. Yeah, I've got two. He said, well, logic would say you're heterosexual. Well, sure. <laughs> he goes, man, I... I want to take that same course. Yeah, that's amazing. So next day he's on the road walking down the street, meets up with a buddy and says, where's you going? He says, I'm getting ready to go uh, sign up for that course at Auburn's uh, given on logic. W- what's that? He goes, well, just a little bit of information. I can derive all sort of things about you. Well, 
give me an example. He said, well, let me show you. Do you own a weed eater? The guy says, no. He starts like counting his fingers. Well, logic, tell me you're homosexual. <laughs> and I just, I remember that, I that story in so many times that he told it. And it didn't matter who was in the room. It could have been <laughs> the smallest of children or the oldest of parents. And, and everybody would be laughing. And by the way, you're going to get to hear that story live. One of these days. There's a documentary that came out on Nelson's life that you and I got to watch. Oh yeah, that's right. A couple months ago. Yeah. And I'm not certain when it's when they're going to be able to publish it to where it's going to be in DVD form or on Netflix or whatever. But I can't wait for you to be able to hear Nelson go through that and other things about his life because he he just had a keen ability to tell a story and to to keep keep you interested timing was impeccable and it's just that those are just funny things about him that he brought to teaching because his life was about three things right that's right he he was a learner a lifelong learner consummate learner how many thing how many books do you think nelson read in his lifetime joey uh there's no telling well just on his website alone you can go and you can start counting the books he has recommended reading Books on economics. What is it? 100, 100 plus? 160, something like that. Books on history. Like 150, 160 of those. Books on the stock market. I mean, yeah, hundreds. <laughs> books on personal development. These are all books that he's read. He's read. And, and that's just a fraction of them because yeah. he read numerous other books. He never arrived. Never arrived. And... If you don't know what we're talking about there, he said the the rival syndrome is when someone has come to a point in their life where they figured out, they think they figured it all out. Yeah. And they've arrived. They've but arrived and he, ne- he never did. Never. It was always learning. And that's one of the things that I, I take away that you and I, I feel like we, we do a decent job of that. I think we're, you know, I know every time I talk to you, you talk to me, it's what book are you reading? What book are you listening to? What podcasts are you listening in on? Yeah. And, and that's a, that's a really a, a fun thing to share with our children. I see your children always reading. That's right. And, and that was something that Nelson's life definitely impacted me because early on when I, when I got out of college and I started working, I wasn't reading any books. That wasn't that wasn't part of my life. Well, it's not it's not the norm. I mean, there's all sort of statistics about people that don't read at all after college. So he was absolutely a learner. the The thing we've already mentioned is he he was a thinker. You oh. can learn without thinking, but he was a learner who then applied by getting away, like you said, having some solitude and thinking about what it was he was learning, so he could apply it. Yeah, I mean, when you, there was times where you'd have conversations and he would start talking about things like the Boer War. How many times would he ask you, Joey? He would sit there and he goes, well, um, do you know this person? Have you heard of this place? Have you heard about, you Those know, were strikeout questions, by the way. <laughs> I, I was, mean. I was gone. Like, I know. It was kind of like, like I mean, I feel so dumb right now. Nelson, like, give me one I can, I can right. say yes to. Do you know about the race riots in Tulsa, Oklahoma? <laughs> you know, like, do you know about the, uh, the, the beers? <laughs> Constant. I, I mean, it was on and on and on. And, but that was challenging us. Yes. To think and challenging us to go learn. Because it was like, there's all this information. Then he would turn around and apply it, right? How did it impact you and I on a daily basis? And he would have that ability to share those stories. So then it would make me go read books that were much past my ability. I mean, I remember, yeah. you know, going and reading the book Anti-Fragile, right? I mean, how many times did he talk about that years and years ago? And just the, the thought process of, well, what, what isn't fragile? Right. Yeah. I mean, does it, do you have a, a box and you write, throw it down? <laughs> yeah. Right. Why, why do they put that word on things? But it, that book, he would share things like that, that he had read and then would apply it back to us. Like, well, think about in your life and your finances and how, how are these relationships working? How does that 
fit together. Yeah. So, so he was about learning. He was about thinking. And the last was he was about teaching. Mm. And, of course, we've already talked about his seminars. We've talked about how he taught his kids. But I'm going to add something. I've, I've very uh, consistently thought of Nelson like Jesus. <laughs> like Jesus. When, when it comes to teaching. Because he was so old or what? Well, you know, partially, no, because Jesus wasn't that old. <laughs> but he, he would never give you a direct answer. Hmm. Okay, think about it. In the Bible, the disciples asked Jesus a question. Did he ever give them a direct yes or no answer? Or no, like, it, was a, it was a parable. It was a parable. It was a story. And guess what? Nine times out of ten, you ask Nelson, okay, so Nelson, I'm trying to expand my system. So, all right, so walk me through, how did you practically do this? By the way, if you ask practically, he wasn't going to answer. <laughs> like, I, point blank, he was going to just tell you a story or bring some obscure, like, historical thing up, and you're like, how does this have anything to do with what I just asked you? But somehow, it would come back to, he wanted me to think. Hmm. Isn't he, that what Jesus wanted? Jesus yeah. wanted the, the disciples to think. He was training them by giving them the ways to think. Does well, that make sense? He, well, he was teaching. I mean, I remember the pastor at the funeral talking about how he had taken the youth minister over to see <laughs> Nelson, right? He hadn't, yeah. The youth minister hadn't spent a whole lot of time around him. And so he took him over there, you know, the week before he had passed. And they're in, he's in the hospital. And he says, I believe that. I don't remember the kid's name. He got the last economics lesson from Nelson. <laughs> now, I don't, I don't quite believe that because I think Nelson was teaching about economics up he's, until the last day. He's probably, yeah, telling the, the heart surgeon right yeah. before he went under. But he was just teaching him about how Joseph <laughs> created dependency on the government. He created dependency on the government whenever he brought his family into Egypt and uh, convinced the Pharaoh to bring them in and to provide them all the food <laughs> and stuff during the famine. I mean, he's teaching that was his life it was teaching yeah. and I, I i you know i talked to his son-in-law david and he said you know the night before he was teaching on the boar's war and talking <laughs> and teaching about the fed and his life was about teaching and and i think that that is something that we will always remember and it, it's so impactful to you and i you and i homeschool that's right and 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 he was always so supportive of that. Yeah, he 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 was a big fan. He he loved he loved to to see our children and to hear the stories about them and ask about them and and what were what were they learning and giving us different different tools and different things. I mean, he was the one that taught us about cash flow for kids. Yeah, I mean that right. was in his book. Yeah, right. I mean that was why you and I have those games because we learned it from him and now we're teaching. So something else I want to say that he challenged me with was he was so proactive, he prepped his wife to be a widow. I mean, those are the words he shared with us over the last several years. He said, I'm teaching Mary to be a widow. Yeah. Who, who says that, by the way? Well, well and what he, what he was doing was literally he he'd created an account for her, and he had her starting to pay the bills. All the things that... He had done. I mean, think about in your life right now. How many things do maybe you do only, only for the family? Yeah. And he knew there were several things in his life that he was the one in charge of it. But he knew that he was not going to outlive her. Right. And he was teaching her about these things, teaching her, as he said, how to be a widow. And the wisdom in that. Oh. I mean, that I mean, for most people, they they don't they don't want to think about death. Right. They fight it. And he embraced it, one, because he knew where he was going. Right. Which, by the way, I mean, we're, there's so many more stories. I feel like I'm, I'm running out of time to, to tell you all these. But the, the, the number one thing was his life was not about a pursuit of wealth, but it was a pursuit of God. Hmm. He was adamant and he was driven even within his seminars, I remember this. If at the very beginning he would go through and he'd say, if you don't know the Lord, if you're not a believer, we got a much bigger conversation we need to have. None of this matters. That's just right. Sure. Come see me at the next break. Yeah. Because it's right. He's right. All this would have been for naught. And all of this would have been worthless 
if he had not had his security in Christ alone. And I think that, that is something that, you know, you may be listening to this and you say, I'm not sure about that. That's, that's something you need to handle immediately. No doubt. All this other stuff, man, this, this, we're, we were talking about building wealth, right? But if our lives and, and the things that we do are not in the pursuit of wealth for wealth's sake, it's the pursuit of stewarding what God's given us. And our lives are the biggest thing he's given us to give away. No doubt. And I mean, to hear his story of how he became a believer at 16 in a tent revival and how he applied that at the dinner table every single night with his kids. And he shared it in seminars as you and I saw. Absolutely. This book is oh, full of Full it. of scripture. Becoming your own banker is, he, he has always been very upfront about that. And that is... That's the legacy. It, when we think about legacies, what are we going to leave? I think about that on his life and wh what kind of legacy are you building? Right. What, how are you going to be remembered? What, what are the things? Is your, is your funeral going to be a worship service? Literally, I, I get chills just thinking about the song. There was an entire choir at his funeral. I don't know that I've ever had a funeral, I mean, a, a choir at a funeral. No, I, that is, if you if you don't know Nelson very closely, you didn't know that he loved to sing. He's a songbird. <laughs> he, he at, <laughs> at, at 87 years old, soloed. Solo. Up in that in, in the uh, choir box. I mean, it's a fairly large church. Yeah. So, it, I mean, but but I literally walked out of there and I felt like we we just worship the Lord. And, and isn't that like our lives should be about a reflection yeah. of him, not our legs. So, so I think there's a fear in what we're talking about, Russ. What kind of legacy is it about you? Yeah. No, I, I, I say that Nelson's legacy is special because it reflects the Lord. Yeah, he was a mirror. Right. No, no doubt. And his life showed that he was not about attaining wealth. Even though he he created tons, yes. and his family, the generations of wealth that will have been created because not only his knowledge level, the the ownership of life insurance policies that that were purchased over the years because of it, the the teachings of how to use those life insurance policies to take over all the financial things in in their lives, but also the death benefits that were created. It was a a stewardship of money that will last for generations. I mean, those kids have a plan of action. That he, he set the, the plan in motion, and it will, as long as they stay with it, it's going to continue on. But you know you it will. Stop it. The, the stories will continue about right. their grandfather, about their great-grandfather. He left them a blueprint within the book. Yeah. And, and there's plenty of video, plenty of other things, plenty of podcasts just like this one. I think it just feels so honored that we get a chance today to share with you the life of Nelson Nash. And his life was about many things. And I hope that just hearing some of these stories brought a smile to your face. But it maybe also it challenges Challenge, you. Challenge, absolutely. To think differently. Like if, you know, if this... If you're not living exactly the way you want to be, then then start today. You know, Nelson always would say you'd use trees because being a forester, he said the best day to plant a tree was 20 years ago. Next best day? Today. Thank you for joining us as we talk about Nelson. This has been the Wealth Without Wall Street podcast. Don't forget to subscribe to the show to break free of the Wall Street mindset and begin building wealth on your own terms in places you understand so that your wealth will never run dry. See you next episode.